Hey guys, welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. So today I am back in California and if you see some machines behind me is because I am in one of the hangars at the headquarters of Robinson Helicopters here. So a few months ago in Florida, we checked out the R66 and a lot of you wanted me to spend more private time with that helicopter. So I reached out to Robinson and they were kind enough to invite me over and check out what they do here. And so today we're gonna get some more private time with the Robinson helicopters, uh, the R66, R44, it's all in here. All of what you see behind me are all Robinson helicopters. So stay tuned and also uh, I'm gonna get somebody to actually explain in more detail because I'm still very not knowledgeable about helicopters, but you all have asked a lot of questions. So I'm gonna get the professional to talk to you. So today we're gonna be talking to Monica and she's gonna show us around these beautiful machines. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so uh, I'm back here with the R66 Robinson helicopter and I have a professional here who's gonna give us a, a proper tour of the aircraft. Uh, with me is Monica and so she's just gonna tell us about this beautiful beast. So please, take me along. Coming up to the R66 turbine helicopter. It was certified in October of 2010. And this is our latest model. It uh, was taken to Heli Expo in Atlanta and was flown back. And it has all, almost all of the optional upgrades that you can get. So let's check them out. Okay, awesome. So the R66 comes equipped with the Rolls-Royce 300 turbine engine. It's 300 shaft horsepower, but we derate it to 270 for takeoff and 224 uh, for continuous usage. We have a two-bladed rotor system that we started with the 22, 44, 66. Uh, it's a simple semi-rigid rotor system that's allowed to flap and feather. What does that mean? So when you say flat and feather, those are technical <laughs> phrases <laughs> for a non-rotor. When one goes up, the other goes down. Okay. And then feather is the blade itself moves up and down. Oh, sweet. Giving you greater angles of attack or lower angles of attack, which allow you to go up or down. Okay. And is there a reason for two blades as, as you know, as, as opposed to three? three? Mm -hmm. Well, when you think about it, Frank started with the R22, the small two-seater. So he needed to make things as simple as possible. And the two-bladed rotor system, which is something he learned when he was at Bell, was something that he thought I think would make a suitable rotor system for his aircraft. Okay. And that model has just followed through with the 44 and the R66. Okay, great. Now, uh, how does tail rotor works compared to that's the I guess that's the main wing of the airplane. How does this work back here? So the main rotor blade creates torque on the aircraft. So if it was spinning in one direction, the aircraft itself would spin in the opposite direction. So you have to have another rotor system or an anti-torque rotor system to prevent that from happening. So the tail rotor is there to uh, control your yaw motion. Okay. okay. So you control that with the pedals inside the aircraft. So the R66 has a maximum gross weight of 2,700 pounds. Uh, we have a 73 gallon fuel tank. And the engine burns about 20 to 22 gallons per hour. So you have about three, three and a half hours of uh, available time in the aircraft. Um, the hover ceiling out of ground effect is over 10,000 feet, and the aircraft can climb over 1,000 feet per minute. That's fully loaded or? Okay. So the turbine helicopter, the R66, is a five-seat aircraft, but can be modified with a center utility console for 
storage and uh, beverage containers. So one of the fun features of this particular R66 is that it comes with heated seats. This is a new feature and as far as we know we're probably the only manufacturer that has heated seats available. So they seat, they heat both the bottom and the back for the front two and the aft two seats, the rear middle seat. So not. these two also are heated? Yes. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And this is the controller for it and you have two heat settings, low and a high. And this helicopter has the latest touchscreen technology. This is a Garmin G500. It's called a 1060 TXI. This is a multifunction display and primary flight display. Below it, we have the Garmin 750 GTN navigator, also touchscreen. And right below it, we have the Genesis autopilot. This is a heli SAS. So the 66 is, uh, most 66 owners are getting the autopilot installed. It is comprised of this uh, audio, sorry, this controller and then buttons on the cyclic stick as well. Now, again, as a newbie, tell yeah. me, how how is this thin flown? Because for me, when I see helicopters, I do. First of all, what is this cyclic called? Uh, is it is there a specific name for it? But I've seen different ones where you have somewhat like just a stick mm -hmm. on each side, and then mm -hmm. now I see this the T, -bar T, T looking thing. Yeah. So walk me through a little bit of of what these control uh, surfaces are and how the helicopter is operated. All right, so the cyclic stick is controlling your rotor system, okay? The plane in which the rotors go through. So this will move forward, you'll move forward, this moves back, you'll move back, right and left, okay? So this T-bar cyclic is in essence the same as the cyclic that comes out of the floor that you've seen in other aircraft, except it's just in the center, okay? So the T-bar allows a pilot to fly it from this seat or this seat okay. doing the same thing. Oh, I but see. when you just have one instead of two, you can reduce the weight. Oh, okay. okay. And so that allows for a lot more lifting cap capabilities and a lot more simpler engineering. Okay. So this is something that Frank designed and many people considered it um, something either ugly or they didn't like it in the beginning because they were used to the other style, right? But this right. actually provides it a much easier way for someone to get in and out of the aircraft versus having to put a leg over the stick that's in the center. I was just gonna say that it's with the leg. It's easier to get in and out. Um, you can fly it from either seat. It can be removed on this side because in a helicopter the pilot in command sits on the right side instead of the left side. Okay. Um, so this can be easily removed and this part can be stowed. And to make it easier for a pilot to rest the cyclic on his, either rest his arm on his leg or rest the cyclic closer to his leg versus that having it in the center and always having to be reaching for it. Okay. But when you think of everything else in here, would you say these are typical or standard for a modern helicopter or? Uh, yeah. I mean, when you get into the R66, it's a turbine helicopter. This is a different clientele. Um, and they are more likely to get high-end items. Um, the 1060, the 700. Um, this also has a lithium battery. Um, this also has an auxiliary fuel tank. So if you wanted to go for longer trips, you have that. And the autopilot is a very big and popular item that many new um, aircraft owners are looking for when they buy an aircraft okay well that is it guys i hope you guys learned a thing or two i appreciate the tour monica mm -hmm. 
And so stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about this helicopter, actually. And she'll give you guys a lot more details. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Again, my name is Mike, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.